truck backs into a storefront and steals the ATM machine. The next morning, the store owner is surveying the damage. Fellow business owner Calvin tells him to hang in there. Two years ago, Calvin inherited his barber shop from his late father. Calvin is experiencing financial problems. He's looking for a way out. The barbers begin to arrive for the day. Jimmy the intellectual, Slim Shady Isaac, drinker of juice Terry, and the shop's senior member, Eddie. Then there's ex-con Ricky. Given his past, Ricky gets questioned about the stolen ATM by Detective Williams. Meanwhile, the real thieves, JD and Billy, are having a hard time moving and cracking the ATM. They have to relocate the ATM after Billy's little sister discovers the ATM and extorts them. Back at the shop, it's business as usual, like Jimmy plugging a little brother while distracted by one of Eddie's wild stories. Calvin calls neighborhood businessman slash loan shark Lester to discuss a buyout. He agrees to sell Lester the barber shop for 20 k Lester informs Calvin that he plans to turn the place into a strip club called the barber shop. Eddie gathers the youngins and schools them about the importance of the neighborhood barber. Calvin is already having regrets about selling the shop. Billy tries his hand at breaking into the ATM, but he ends up setting the motel room on fire, and it's time to move the ATM again. Speaking of the ATM, the store owner tells Calvin that it hadn't been loaded with money yet. Yes, JD and Billy are trying to break into an empty ATM machine. The fellas at the shop have a conversation about the civil rights era. Eddie has a different take on Rosa Parks' contributions. Calvin goes to see Lester. He's had a change of heart. He returns the money. He wants to call the deal off. Lester isn't going to let him out of the deal unless he can pay double to repurchase the shop. Lester gives the $20,000 back to Calvin and tells him to come up with $40,000 by 7 p.m. Calvin dreads breaking the news to his barbers about selling the shop. He tells Eddie first. Eddie lets him know that he's selling more than just the building. He's selling out part of the community. Calvin breaks the news to the rest of the barbers. Before they get a chance to go in on Calvin, Detective William bursts into the shop and arrests Ricky. The police trace the license plate used in the ATM smash and grab back to Ricky's truck. Turns out JD and Ricky are cousins, and JD used Ricky's truck the night of the smash and grab. Ricky was already sitting on two strikes, and JD has no chill when he finds out that his cousin is about to take strike three. JD and Billy's next move is to move the ATM to Lester's chop shop. Calvin uses the $20,000 to bail Ricky out. Ricky wants to extract some street justice on JD, but Calvin talks him down. Calvin and Ricky head to Lester's chop shop to try to get the barbershop back, but they find JD and Billy there instead. Then Lester arrives, and before he shoots everyone inside his chop shop, Detective Williams crashes the party. Calvin diverts the police heat off of Lester and tells him that JD and Billy are the thieves. Calvin then points out the $50,000 reward for finding the stolen ATM, just enough money to buy back his barbershop. The last scene is the barbershop, still part of the community. Thank you.